Greetings. Welcome, welcome to another video of me diddling around with stuff that I really don't know much about. It uh, makes it all the more exciting. So the the plan here was to get a uh, like a fully 3D printed rotor. That I figure that'll be more precise and more accurate and reliable and then just start experimenting with it with these pulse motors to try and gather data and see if I find anything interesting and you know first can I actually make something spin that's always nice you know a good place to start and so there are things that have went well there's been kind of the the good the bad and the ugly um, mainly good but um, as as we go into this no actually get it spinning now um, you kind of see the ugly and that's going to need to be addressed but I'm kind of what I think I'm going to do is kind of back off from the Mark 1 back to like a Mark 0 0.5 <laughs> and just start gathering data with that as I reprint one of the key parts to try to make sure that um, it's it's a little bit better um, so uh, let me just show you because that'll be easier so I'm gonna you know just show you the the circuit again this isn't stuff that I haven't done before but just kind of go over it again and then why I'm trying to set it up this way and the other thing that I want to do as I've said is just sort of try and go through methodically and just look at different things and have fun with that so um, here it is so here is the machine now that it's uh, put together and all printed and you know you see you have a rotor up top here well it's all one rotor but you have a top part there are these magnets and those are in there and then the rotor connects down to the bottom shelf and there's another set of magnets that you can't really see down there and so the way this one's set up is all these magnets are facing the same way say all north facing towards the ceiling north 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 that's called a monopole configuration now you could also set it up where it goes north then south then north then south and that's called bipolar but if you do that then you have to switch your electromagnet back and forth depending on whether it's coming past a north or a south so it's a little bit more complicated circuit and just to get things going start off with a monopole now why is it why did I want to set it up this way? So if we go back, here's like a rotor I was using before. And this spins really well. And you see it comes fast there and you go boom and then boom and then boom. And that makes it spin round and round as you continue to pulse it. The one thing that's um, potentially better with the other setup is right now you put your current into this electromagnet. So here you have a permanent magnet with a north say there and a south there. And then you have your electromagnet that when you put the current in, let's say it has a south pole here and then a north pole down there, just like it's a bar magnet. And so if you're in repulsion mode, this south sees another south and it runs away. And then it's like um, Lucy and Charlie Brown it shuts off so it's like coming here and then boom so it it, it always well it'd be better analogy in attraction mode so let's say this is north south it comes running towards there just when it thinks it's going to kick the football the magnet disappears so that's that's how these things work <laughs> but it's not that bad an analogy but here you know you're getting a north and a south pole for your electromagnet but this side isn't doing anything and so that's why I've set it up this other way to see if that's actually better. And um, uh, we'll, we'll get into that in a minute. So I think they call this something like a outrunner or outrigger configuration where, you know, what you would do is just line up coils all the way around there. And it's also a permanent magnet motor, which that's kind of curious to think about because some of your torque is coming from the current that you put into the coil and then some of it is coming from the magnetic environment that's established by a permanent magnet. So that, that one uh, is interesting. So as I was talking about, so now with this setup, you put your 
coil in like that and it sees a magnet there and then down, down on the bottom it sees a magnet there at the same time. So let's say, let's say we're running it in a traction mode. You put current into here, you get a north facing on your electromagnet up top. And then, so you have a south facing here and that pulls it in. Now, since you have a north facing on your electromagnet on the top, you have a south facing on the bottom. And so at the same time, you have a north facing towards that one to pull that in. So you see, they just both have to be working in concert. Once, you know, once you have your coil there, I mean, you can't just have the coil on the whole time or, you know, say it's an attraction, it'll be attracted there and then, you know, boom. And so you need to be able to turn the coil on and off at the appropriate time. And that's true of a pulse motor. It's true of, of any electric motor with um, the exception of the, the Faraday homopolar motor, which is an interesting animal. Maybe I'll have a go at building one um, at some point. So you need to you need to know where the magnet is in relation to the coil. Now it's it's not all that complicated. I mean you could just do it um, with what's called physical commutation. So like just have a strip of copper here and then like two brushes between the north and south of a battery. And when both of them are on that strip of copper, then oh it'll put power in and then it moves off the strip of copper. Now you get a little bit of resistance there, but it's um, it's very EMP resistant. <laughs> so, but it's, I mean, there's no, there are no electronic parts really. I mean, it's just, you know, aside from the battery, there's no like transistors or anything like that. But then if you wanna go, go to what's called a brushless motor, which is, you lose that resistance, which is kind of nice. Then you have to figure out, well, how are you gonna, how are you gonna know where the magnet is? So, I mean, you could, you could, um, I mean, this is silly, but you could, you know, like have a, a photodiode and then, you know, like have little light emitting diodes in line with these and then you know you'd like oh the light came on and then you know all right now we pulse it here you could have what's called a reed switch and i made a, a video you know how do you do you know how to do this with a reed switch and the reed switch is just two strips of metal where when it comes past the magnet they get pulled together and that works really well except for the reed switch can be a little bit finicky there's a lot to like about it um but it can be a little finicky so another way is what's called a Hall effect sensor. And, um, you know, I made some videos talking about Hall effect sensors, so I'm not going to go into all that now. But with the Hall effect, it both knows when a magnet is coming past, and it knows whether it's seeing the north field or the south field of the magnet. And that is really nice if you want to go to, as I was talking about, bipolar commutation, where you go north, then south, then north, then south, instead of right now just north, north, north. Because if you go north, south, then you have to switch your electromagnet each time. Okay, so let's go to the circuit now, which again, it looks a little more complicated than it is, um, than it you know would need to be. It could just be physical commutation, but I'm using Hall effect to sense where the magnet is. So there's, there's our little Hall effect sensor. And not to go into too much here, but it's also what's called a linear or ratiometric Hall effect sensor. So there's some kind of Hall effect sensors where it'll only detect north or only detect south. This one, it behaves differently all on the same sensor, whether it's north or south. And I'll demonstrate that for you in a minute. There's a, you know, an analog change that happens with the behavior of the hall depending on the magnetic field or lack thereof that's around it. So that analog signal is sent to an Arduino and specifically to um, the analog digital converter chip on the Arduino. So it takes that analog signal and it converts it into a number. Now once you have it as a number, then you can do a program to say, well, if the number is this, then, you know, fire this off. If the number's not that, then don't fire that off. And that's what this, this circuit does. Now, this circuit, there's a little more on here than, than there needs to be. So 
let me just go through it real quick because the circuit is actually very simple. You know, here's just your ground. Here is pin 13. Now, pin 13 is going to one channel on a solid state relay. So, this thing sits up here. The rotor spins, and as it spins, it generates a different signal, generates a different number. Depending on what the number is, you say, turn this pin on or off. This pin turns the solid state relay on or off. You have power flowing into two bus lines here. And so here's your switch. And that's just, okay, we, we close this switch. Now power flows into your coil and makes the thing spin. And then it shuts off afterwards. Now, why do I have all these here? This, I also, you know, was setting up for bipolar commutation. Bipolar commutation is a little bit more complicated, and so you need you need four switches, but then you can switch this back and forth, north-south, north-south, and it's a little bit more efficient motor that way. And then what's this? I mean, I'm you know, it just kind of looks cool, but this is um, what's called a bridge rectifier. So if you're trying to gather the inductive spike off this thing as it's changing, you can do so either with a single diode or with a bridge rectifier. And likewise, if you have what's called a pickup coil or a generator coil, you need to rectify that um, changing electricity that's coming off. And so you put it through a bridge rectifier. Or, you know, I mean, you could also just put it through a single diode. Um, that's one thing I'm going to be looking at more as I really get going with this. So let me just talk a little bit more about what's going on with the Hall Effect here. So here I have a program uh, that uh, Hall Effect, uh, you know, monopole Hall Effect commutation. And so it's, it's really straightforward. You just have one pin, pin 13. And... And then you say, if sensor value, this is how I have it set up now. I mean, it's going to depend, you know, if you do this on your machine and, and you know, the specific hall that you use. Uh, less than or equal to 320, then turn the thing on. Otherwise, if it's greater than 320, then turn the thing off. So let's, let's kind of, you know, you can do this for debugging where you say, all right, well, tell me what the value is every quarter second, tell me what the value is for this sensor value. So as I said, the Hall effect has an analog signal that it's sending out to your analog digital converter depending on the, the um, magnetic environment. Let's print that signal and we'll print it once every quarter second. So I'm going to compile this if it compiles. And now we're going to go out to the serial monitor. And so you see what it's doing there is it's just shooting out a value of 507 or 508 every time. And again, that particular value is going to be dependent on the specific, um, you know, part number you have for the hall. So what I'm going to do now is I won't be able to show them both at the same time, I don't think. But I'm going to bring this magnet in towards the hall effect. Okay, so I brought that in like that. And see now that's your number. So it's saying, oh, there's a particular magnet there. Now what I'm going to do, you can see it's kind of chipped on that side. So I'm switching it over to the other side. And now I'm going to bring that side in to the Hall effect. And see the number goes the opposite way. So you see how easy it is now to not only do, um, uh, you know, commutation of the, the um, uh, turning the thing on and off, but also bipolar commutation. Because with one pole, let's call this north, it goes down. Oops. And with the other pole, it goes high. So it makes things a lot easier. So you see now you just put your hall up top here, which kind of works out nice with this sort of geometry. And now what I'm going to do is just
kind of very slowly rotate this and look at what happens here. Just rotating it slowly. So we're away from a magnet. Now rotate it again. And the number starts dropping. We're near our magnet. And remember, they're all arranged the same way. That's why it doesn't go different directions. It's always just going down to 200 and then back to the baseline around 500. And so that's why I'm saying there, if it's less than 320, then go ahead and, um, and fire the thing. Otherwise, shut the thing off. Now, if you move this out, you know, like here, it will not go down as much it might go from like 450 to 400 if i put it in closer it would um it would go down closer to zero but let's just say now i'm probably not going to glue this thing in but i'm probably going to tape it down when i have it somewhere that i like the other thing that you can do now that you have it as a digital signal on the arduino is you can say let's let's see here uh, Um, well, I'm trying to get a good spot here. It, it, I think it, it was going down to like 250 or something like that. But the point being is that everyone talks about, you know, oh, pulse width modulation and all that, you know, like basically how, how short the pulse is. And you can, you can vary that now just with your code. If I said, if sensor value less than or equal to 380, the thing would be on a lot longer. If I say less than or equal to 280, the thing will be a very brief pulse. Now, if you make it too much, you know, this thing doesn't get below like 250. So if you said less than 200, the thing would never turn on. So I'm just kind of picking a place to start where I think it'll consistently fire each time, but I want a brief pulse because it's a pulse motor. And really, it's just sort of the duration of that pulse, whether it's brief or whether you have like a lot of magnet here and the thing just stays on the whole time for the magnet. That's sort of like the, in my neophyte view, is kind of like the main difference between these motors and more conventional electric motors. But um, th that's it. So, I mean, now it's good to go. So we have one end of our coil is going to this end of the switch so when this thing changes that turns that switch on it closes now power can flow through the coil around around to there to the ground so you have a bus line here we'll just send it to a, a lithium ion it goes out to here puts power into there and then back around the ground that makes the loop so when i connect this to here and give it a spin it should do something and no guarantee sometimes sometimes you know you got to feel a little to figure out what part is loose but let's find out okay so this is this is what it comes down to let's get ready to rumble yeah there it goes Things to like about it, things not to like about it. Let me just give that a minute. So now you see why that spins. It's just spinning off of that. It's spinning up pretty nice. So here's a, a photo tachometer, and I'm going to point it at you know, where that white stripe is. I can hold it there. 675 RPM, 676. And this is a five inch rotor, so that's more like, you know, 800 or something um, if I was back to the four inch rotors that I was using before. And that's about as far as it's going to go. Now, I could hook up an amp meter. I mean, we know that the volts is about four. And all right, I'll do that. Okay, so it'll focus. I've diddled around, you know, with all the magnetism flying around. But um, I've hooked this up. So we're drawing 24 milliamps. And I've, I've also got, you know, I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. I've got this thing, this cheap 
analog one that I picked up. Uh, there are things I don't like about that. What I don't like about this is that it bounces around a bit and it's also really easy to fry the fuse, especially when you first start the thing spinning. But let's call it between 25 and 26 um, milliamps and 4 volts, so about 100 milliwatts. Um, and that's there. Let's see what we're spinning at. And you can see now, you know, now you know your amp draw, you know your voltage, and then you can start to look at things like RPMs. And then when you start to gather off the, the radiant and also put in pickup coils, are you getting anywhere? Or, or is this just a silly, silly hobby? Yeah, we're almost up to about 700 RPMs. You know, that's not, I mean, that's not that shabby. So there are things that I like about this. Now, there's one thing that I really don't like, and, you know, this is the ugly. And I'll show you. Um, uh, I got, I got, you know, Lord Wobble Shaft going on down there. That thing is wobbling all the heck over the place. And I've broken the, you know, the rotor into two pieces again. The top one, it just is beautiful. I don't know if I was talking about this in the previous video, but the bottom one's not good. And I think I know how to solve that. So, what I'm going to need to do is reprint that part. And, uh, you know, that's like a 12-hour print or something. So that'll take a while. But what I was sort of thinking, and then, you know, do I actually solve it? Or is this as good, you know, because maybe I, I, I get a C-minus in shop. Uh, maybe this is as good as I end up doing. Um, I'd like to get rid of that wobble. I'd like to get rid of, you know, I mean, it's not going to be perfect, you know. Um, but if I could get rid of 80% of that wobble, this thing would be going, I bet you it would be going 1,000 RPMs. Because that's just all needless resistance. But it's not doing that bad. I mean, <laughs> you know, I can't complain too much about that. 4 volts, 26 milliwatt, milliamps. Um, and, and that's all right. So what I'll probably do is... Just for the data gathering part, while I'm printing the bottom there, I'm just going to take that whole thing off and just run the top part, which spins really true. And it won't maybe be as good um, because you're losing half that mode of power, although you're also losing that resistance from the wobble. So that's like what I want to solve in terms of mechanical part. But even if I'm just looking at the top now, just start having fun you know gathering data and um you know one of the things is going to be add a second coil add a pickup coil look at it at different voltages look at it with different um uh, you know different gauges of wire and you know i'm kind of just having fun diddling around with with electronic motors and and whatnot but it'll be fun to um to gather all that data and kind of put it in a spreadsheet and uh, see how it behaves you know look at it at at 3 volts at 6 volts at 12 volts if you think the thing is going to hold together at 24 volts um, and go from there but I mean at 4 volts it's doing 700 RPMs so uh, you know if, you, if I went with thinner gauge of wire but then again that's you know the question about wire gauge so I'm just starting to ramble because I'm getting I'm getting excited about stuff to look at. But this is the part that disappointed me, is that thing's a little bit too wobbly. You know, it's not terrible, but it's not. It's not up to my exacting standards. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can fix that, um, or at least improve it. So I hope people had fun with, you know, watching this and this is uh i certainly have had fun building it and i think it gets more fun from here on out because it's less of you know me like cursing the 3d printer and more of like cursing the arduino like why aren't you working i don't, uh, I don't want to <laughs> you know knock on wood here um but you know to, to not be so silly it's going to be more actually gathering some data and having fun with that so again i hope everyone had fun um coming along and now you know a little bit more about how electric motors work and so do i so that's how you do brushless commutation 
So take care, everyone, and stay tuned. In the next video, I'll be gathering data and looking at different coil arrangements and different voltages and all kinds of stuff. So bye for now.